The Thompson submachine gun is an American submachine gun first invented by John T. Thompson in 1918 during World War I and became infamous during the Prohibition era, being a signature weapon of various organized crime syndicates in the United States. It was a common sight in the media of the time, been used by both law enforcement officers and criminals. The Thompson submachine gun was also known informally as the Tommy Gun, Straight Sweeper, Annihilator, Chicago Typewriter, Trench Broom, Chicago Submachine, Chicago Piano, Chicago Style, Chicago Organ Grinder, Drum Gun, The Chopper, The Tommy Boy, or simply The Thompson. The Thompson was favored by soldiers, criminals, police, FBI, and civilians alike for its fully automatic fire, while still being relatively lightweight, portable, and easy to use. It has since gained popularity among civilian collectors for its historical significance. It has considerable significance in popular culture, especially in works about the Prohibition era and World War II, and is one of the most well-known and recognized firearms in history. The original fully automatic Thompsons are no longer produced. General Don T. Thompson developed the Thompson shed machine gun. He originally envisioned an auto rifle or semi-automatic rifle to replace the bolt-action service rifles then in use, such as the American M1903 Springfield, but he came across a patent issued by John Bell Blish in 1915 while searching for a way to allow his weapon to operate safely without the complexity of a recoil or gas-operated reloading mechanism. Thompson gained financial backing from Thomas F. Ryan and started the Auto Ordnance Company in 1916 for the purpose of developing his auto rifle. It was primarily developed in Cleveland, Ohio. The limits of the Blish principle were discovered. Rather than working as a locked breech, it functioned as a friction-delayed blowback action. It was found that the only cartridge currently in service that was suitable for use with the lock was the 45 AC Pround. Thompson then envisioned a one-man handheld machine gun and 45 ACP as a trench boom for use in the ongoing trench warfare of World War I. The project was entitled Annihilator I, and most of the design issues had been resolved by 1918. However, the war ended two days before prototypes could be shipped to Europe. The Thompson was the first weapon to be labeled and marked as a submachine gun. Thompson intended for the weapon to provide a high volume of automatic, man-portable fire for uses in trench warfare. The Thompson first entered production as the M1921. It was available to civilians, although poor sales resulted from the expense of the weapon. M1921 Thompsons were sold in small quantities to the United States Postal Inspection Service to protect the mail from a spate of robberies and to the United States Marine Corps. Federal sales were followed by sales to several police departments in the U.S. and minor international sales to various armors and constables. Federal sales were followed by sales to several police departments in the U.S. and minor international sales to various armies and constabulary forces, chiefly in Central and South America. The Marines used their Thompsons in the Banana Wars and in China. It was popular as a point defense weapon for countering ambush by Nicaraguan guerrillas and led to the organization of four-man fire teams with as much firepower as a nine-man rifle squad. The major complaints against the Thompson were its weight, Inaccuracy it ranges over 50 yards in the lack of penetrating power of the 45 ACP pistol cartridge. Some of the first batches of Thompsons were brought in America by agents of the Irish Republic, notably Harry Boland. The first test of a Thompson in Ireland was performed by West Cork Brigade Commander Tom Barry in the presence of IRA leader Michael Collins. They purchased a total of 653, but U.S. Customs authorities in New York seized 495 of them in June 1921. The remainder made their way to the Irish Republican Army by way of Liverpool and were used in the last month of the Irish War of Independence from 1919 until 1921. After a truce with the British in July 1921, the IRA imported more Thompsons and used them in the subsequent Irish Civil War from 1922 until 1922. The Thompson achieved most of its early notoriety in the hands of Prohibition and Great Depression era gangsters, the lawmen who pursued them, and in Hollywood films about their exploits, most notably in the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. The two Thompson guns used in the massacre are still held by the Berrien County Sheriff's Department. The Thompson has been referred as the gun that made the 20s roar. The FBI first acquired Thompsons in 1933 following the Kansas City Massacre. 
In 1938, the Thompson submachine gun was adopted by the U.S. military, serving during World War II and beyond. Over 1.5 million military Thompson submachine guns were produced during World War II. Thompson submachine guns were used by both sides during the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. Following the war, Thompsons were issued to members of Israeli's Elite Unit 101 upon the formation of that unit in 1953. By the time of the Korean War in 1950, the Thompson had seen much use by the U.S. and South Korean military, even though the Thompson had been replaced as standard issue by the M3, M3A1. The Thompson remained classed as limited standard or substitute standard long after the standardization of the M3, M3A1. During the Cuban Revolution, the Thompson submachine gun was used by both Batista's Army and Fidel Castro's guerrillas. Both the latter and the Brigade 2506 also used some during the Bay of Pigs invasion. During the Vietnam War, some South Vietnamese Army units and defense militia were armed with Thompson submachine guns, and a few of these weapons were used by reconnaissance units, advisors, and other American troops. It was partially replaced by the MAC-10, albeit during Vietnam, the fully automatic fire provided by the M-16 made the Thompson less effective than it previously had been. Still, not only did some U.S. soldiers have use of them in Vietnam, they encountered them as well. The Viet Cong liked the weapon and used both captured models as well as manufacturing their own copies in small jungle workshops. The Thompson was also used by the U.S. and overseas law enforcement and police forces, most prominently by the FBI. The FBI used Thompsons until they were declared obsolete and ordered destroyed in the early 1970s. There were two main experimental models of the Thompson. The Persuader was a belt-fed version developed in 1917-1918. It was partially built but never completely finished. The Annihilator prototypes were first fed from a 20-round box magazine, but later the 50- and 100-round drum magazine models were developed. The model 1921, or M1921, was the first major production model. 15,000 were produced by Colt for auto ordnance. The M1921 was quite expensive to manufacture. The model gained fame from its use by criminals during Prohibition. It was nicknamed Tommy Gun by the media. The model 1923 was a heavy submachine gun introduced to partially expand the auto ordnance production line and was demonstrated for the U.S. Army. It fired the more powerful 45 Remington Thompson cartridge. The M1923 was intended to rival the M1918 Browning, automatic rifle or BAR with which the Army was already satisfied. The Army did not give the Model 1923 much consideration, so it was not adopted. The Model 1928 was the first type widely used by military forces, with the U.S. Navy and U.S. Marine Corps as major buyers through the 1930s. The 1928 Thompson would be the last small arm adopted by the U.S. Army that used a year designation in the official nomenclature. With the start of World War II, major contracts from several countries saved the manufacturer from bankruptcy. A notable variant of the Model 1928 with an aluminum receiver, a detenite grip, buttstock, and forend was made by Savage. The M1928A1 variant entered mass production before the attack on Pearl Harbor as the on-hand stock ran out. Despite new U.S. contracts for lend-lease shipments abroad to China, France, and the United Kingdom, as well as the needs of American armed forces, only two factories supplied M1928A1 Thompsons during the early years of World War II. Though it could use both the 50-round drum and the 20- or 30-round box magazines, active service favored the box magazines as the drums were more prone to jamming, rattled when moving, and were too heavy and bulky on long patrols. 562,511 were made. In addition, the Soviet Union received M1928A1s included as standard equipment with the M3 light tanks obtained through Lend-Lease. These submachine guns were used to a limited extent by the Red Army. In 1940, Commonwealth troops in Egypt and North Africa were issued commercial model Lend-Lease Colt and Savage manufactured M1928s. Section leaders carried them instead of pistols or rifles. Many of the Colt models had French language manuals packed with them as they had been abruptly diverted to England after the fall of France. They soon discovered that the weapon was prone to jamming due to sand. It was later replaced by the 9mm Sten gun and Lancaster SMG. Responding to a request for further simplification, the M1 was standardized in April 1942 as the United States submachine gun Cal 45 M1. First issues in 1943, the M1 uses a simple blowback operation with the charging handle moved to the side. 
The M1A1, standardized in October 1942, is the United States submachine gun Cal 45 M1A1. Could be produced in half the time of the M1928A1 at a much lower cost. In 1939, Thompson's cost the government 209 apiece. By the spring of 1942, cost reduction design changes had brought this down to $70. In February 1944, the M1A1 reached a low price of $45 each, including accessories and spare parts, although the difference in price between the M1 and the M1A1 was only six cents. By the end of the war, the M1A1 was replaced with the even lower cost M3, commonly called the grease gun.
Yo, on the truck. 